you said that Muhammad could also have his slave girls, those his right hands yes. possess? Yes. Wait a minute. Muhammad, so Muhammad could have his wives and then those his right hands possess, i.e. His, his slave girls? That's right. Does this mean he could have sex with his slave girls? Yes. And this is something I hope that precious sister, the Latina, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the Lord Jesus brings her to this video. Not only could Muhammad sleep with slave girls, chapter 4, verse 24, Surat al-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 24, she needs to hear this stuff. Women, if you get a hold of this person, or if you know of others that want to convert to Islam, show them this information. Chapter 4, verse 24, Surat al-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 24, not only Muhammad, but Muslims in general. It says, forbidden to you, forbidden to you are married women, except those whom your right hands possess. You don't need to guess what the interpretation is. You go to Sunan Abu Dawood, Sunan Abu Dawood, number 2150, guys. You can read it online for free. Go to sunnah.com, S-U-N-N-A-H.com. Sunan Abu Dawood, it says that a group of Muslim men wanted to sleep, have sex with some beautiful captive women, but their husbands were alive. Guys, their husbands were alive and they were ashamed. The verse came down. Muhammad's God said, they're your property. You can have sex with them, even though their husbands are still alive. And when you're done with them, you can sell them off. So not only could Muhammad have sex with slave girls, he and his followers could have sex with slave girls that they've taken captive who are still married. Chapter 4, verse 24 of the Quran. Chapter 33, verse 50. And if you don't believe me, write, read any commentary. Ibn Kathir, they all say it. And the one hadith I reference is Sunan Abu Dawood. Sunan Abu Dawood, number 2150. And that is a command that has not been abrogated. Guys, you understand what that means? If Ali Dawa is able to take over the UK and he's able to impose Islamic law on the UK, that means if I was living there and David's living there and we're married, not only could he take us captive and kill us, which he'll do because he even said he'd kill ex-Muslim apostates and us for speaking about Islam, he could take our wives in front of our eyes and sleep with them and sell them off and there isn't a darn thing we can do about it or our wives can do about it. Mm -hmm. Now, Sam, just because the Quran says that Muhammad is allowed to have sex with his slave girls, how do we know that he actually did? I mean, how would we actually know <laughs> oh, that he man, did this? Man, I you're mean, throwing me like curveballs. I'm, ju I'm, ju I'm just saying, if, if, all these pe if all these Muslims online are telling... Uh, this young woman about how marriage is so such a beautiful thing in Islam, then Muhammad, who's the example, the pattern of conduct for men, there's no way he actually. No, he didn't do that. Right? Oh, right. No. Okay. All you need to do, guys, go to chapter 66 of the Quran, Surat al Tahrim. Don't take my word for it. Read any of the commentators. In fact, you can read them online for free. Al Tafsir.com, the two Jalals. And According to the Muslim commentators, chapter 66, verses 1 to 12, was sent down to give Muhammad the right to absolve an oath he had made. What's the story? <clears throat> Guys, uh, you need to listen. I mean, this really, the more I read about this man, the more I'm shocked that there are Muslims who follow him and would defend us. Now, remember I said that Muhammad had assigned specific days to his wives. Some wives he just outright ignored, like Sauda. Aisha gave her two days. One of his favorite wives, one, not as favorite as Aisha, was Hafsa, the daughter of Amr, Amr ibn al-Khattab. Now, if you guys don't know who Amr is, Amr was the second caliph, right? He was Muhammad's second best friend. His first best friend was Abu Bakr, the father of Aisha. On Hafsa's day, the day that Muhammad would go spend time in Hafsa's house, I'm about to laugh here. This man, dude. I mean, man, this guy was a... What, what, can we call him a gigolo? I mean, I don't know. What can we call him? But anyway, um, it's her day. He's in her house. Remember, it's her house. These were the houses of his wives. Hafsa told Muhammad, I'm going to go see my father. So she goes to her father's house. Guess what Muhammad did? 
He went and got Maria the cop. Remember, it's Hafsa's day, folks. That means he has to keep himself for her, stay in the house, spend time with her, and be intimate with her. Muhammad couldn't control himself. He went and got Maria the cop. She was from, <clears throat> from Egypt, sent as a gift, her and her sister, Serene. He took Maria the cop and the wife of Hafsa's, and his, his wife, Hafsa's home. Not even Maria's home. Hafsa's home, and started sleeping with her, Hafsa walks in and catches him in the act, embarrasses him and Maria, the cop, the slave girl, and what did Muhammad do? He made an oath, he swore to her, if you don't tell anyone, I will never touch Maria again. So, he sent Maria off, and Hafsa told Aisha, word got back to Muhammad that Hafsa told Aisha, Muhammad then took oath that he wouldn't get near any of his wives for 30 days. And then the Quran sat down saying, what's wrong with you, Muhammad? Why do you forbid what Allah has made lawful to you? Forget that silly oath of yours. You want to sleep with Maria? Go ahead. Hafsa can't do a damn thing about it. That's how I know. Um, yeah, I'm finding this a little hard to believe here, Sam. <laughs> um, yeah. What? Why are you laughing? Why are you because laughing at my like... legitimate concerns, Sam? <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and check out this hadith here. All right. So this is Sunan An-Nasai 3411. It was narrated from Anas. Got it here in English and Arabic, ladies and gentlemen. It was narrated from Anas that the Messenger of Allah had a female slave with whom he had intercourse. Wait a minute. What? I thought... I thought he freed all the slaves, Sam. It's not making oh, any yeah. sense. I've been no, told. No, that was in the Mirage. In the Mirage. When he went to Mirage, he freed slaves in the Mirage. What's wrong with you, man? It's got to be, it's gotta be something because I hear that Muhammad liberated all these slaves, but I always hear about all these slaves that Muhammad hit. It was narrated from Anas that the Messenger of Allah had a female slave with whom he had intercourse. Wow, a slave with whom he had intercourse. Sam, what do we think when we hear about. Uh, slave owners and so on having intercourse with their slaves we generally don't think that's something that's a good pattern no. of conduct that we should all be imitating but that but the quran puts forward muhammad as as a pattern of conduct for everyone and don't to forget that he's supposed to be an example for all generations at all times till the return of jesus so this is applicable for the 21st century don't forget all right it was narrated from anas that the messenger of allah had a female slave with whom he had intercourse but Aisha and Hafsa would not leave him alone until he said that she was forbidden for him. What happened then? Then Allah, the mighty and sublime, revealed, O Prophet, why do you forbid for yourself that which Allah has allowed to you until the end of the verse? Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because we're talking about marriage being such a beautiful thing in Islam. Were Muhammad's wives happy? Muhammad's nine wives, were they happy with the fact that he's having sex with his slave girls? Were they happy with this? No. It says they wouldn't leave him alone. They kept bothering him. Why are you having... Muhammad, you've got nine of us. Why are you having sex with the slave girl? What? Why, why is that so important to you that even though you're, you've, got, you've got nine wives... We're not enough for you. You still have to go around boning your slave girl. Yeah. Right? That's what they're asking. Why are you doing it? Why can't we be enough for you? Why can't we be enough for you? Why can't we just be enough? <laughs> what, what kind of man is not satisfied? What kind of porn star would not be satisfied with nine women that he can choose from at any time? Why aren't we enough for you? Why not? Why do you have to even go to your slave girls? Why? And they kept bothering him until he said, fine, I'll never sleep with that woman again. Well, that girl again. I'll never have sex with that girl again. And then what happens? Allah reveals. This is in the Quran, ladies and gentlemen. This is in the Quran. Guys, pay attention. This is in the Quran. I can't emphasize to you enough. What Allah revealed in response to this. Allah responds to Muhammad by saying, Oh, Prophet, why do you forbid for yourself that which Allah has allowed to you? So he, Allah revealed... Surah 66, verses 1 to 2. Muhammad, stop. <laughs> stop listening to your wives' complaints. 
If you want to have sex yeah. with your slave girl, you have that right. I didn't tell you to make that oath. So Muhammad, the perfect example of morality, the perfect example of a healthy marriage, made an oath to his wives. I swear by the great God Allah that I will never have sex with that woman again, that girl again. And then he comes back later, oops, Allah told me to break my oath that I swore to all of you. And now I'm going to go back to having sex with my slave girl. And by the way, he got her pregnant, didn't he, didn't he Sam? Yep, and he had a son with her, Ibrahim, who didn't even live long. He died while a toddler, Ibrahim, named him mm -hmm. after his father, Abraham. All right, so uh, guys, Sam, Sam, here, here's the thing, Sam. There are lots of things that the, the Dawagandists can lie about, and I have an idea of things they would point to and in, in, in order to lie. When they say it's, marriage is beautiful, and it's, I don't even know what they're thinking of, right? I don't even know what they're thinking. I don't even know what you could twist into that, right? You've got Aisha, the mother of the faithful, saying that Muslim women were treated worse than pagan women because they have a command to beat their wives into submission. You've got Muhammad climbing on top of a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. You got if if you if Muhammad didn't like the way you looked anymore, he was going to divorce you unless you came up with an agreement that would allow him to have sex with a little girl even more. Um, we we didn't get into Zainab. He took the wife of his own adopted son after oh, he yeah. after he was lusting after her. Uh, he did take captives and so on as as his wives, and so. This is the most dysfunctional scenario I can even imagine. This is the most dysfunctional marriage in the history of humanity. Where could you possibly get the idea that this is somehow beautiful? You get it? Not by reading the sources, but by listening to people online and by mindlessly believing whatever they say. And that's but why... They that's why when we come along and say, do your research, they freak out. No, 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 whatever you do, don't do your research. What's up? But this Muslim got you here. Abdul Rahman, Muhammad, the same guy. Did he? he said, oh, nice. Yeah, look what he said. Oh, but he got you. No, no, notice the logic. Surprise. See, they were, je they were jealous of him. What does it tell you if all of his wives were jealous of their husband? Meaning, you see, he was such a great man, such a great lover, and so kind. They all wanted his attention fully. You see, David? Now, now look at look at this disgusting thinking. Um, <laughs> this this shows you how much they they all wanted him just for themselves, guys. If you're a wife, I mean, look, look, put it this way: if you're a wife, and, and it could be true for a husband too, right? If you're if you're if you're if you're if your wife goes out and cheats on you, or your husband goes out and, and cheats on you, that that's kind of a slap in your face, right? Like I want someone else, right? If you're Muhammad, if you're Muhammad, right, and once you start getting second wife, third wife, fourth wife, fifth wife, to each wife before that, it's like you're saying, you're not enough for me. You're not enough for me, Aisha. You're not enough for me, Aisha and Sauda. You're not enough for me, Aisha and Sauda and Zainab. And so you're, you're not enough. And then after he's got all these nine wives, then, oh, and by the way, none of you are enough for me. You think they're they're complaining because they love him so much? I mean, think about how this makes them look, right? It's none of us are none of us are good enough. None of us are none of none of us none of us are enough for this. None of us can satisfy this man sexually. None of us is attractive enough to to have this man focus completely on us. Not one of us. And even after he has nine of us, he, he's he's still going to his slave girls. Disgusting. And Abdul Rabbah, you see, and this shows that it's a wonderful relationship, and they're really in love with him. This is this is this is what this <laughs> I, this is what this prophet does to you, ladies and gentlemen.